Hello everybody, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. I hope everybody's having a great day today and I hope this video makes your day a little better. Today what we're doing is we are going over performance again. I did this a few months back. Lots of things have changed since then. I got a new system. I've helped tons of people with really old systems and I'd like to go over a rework of that video. Now what I will do today is show some points here. This is the things I'd like to go over. If you have graphical bugs with the newest versions of CSP, try and disable shadowed wheels if you have flickering of cars or a dark road. High Z reflections if you get flickering reflections that aren't coming through clear on things like the FedEx truck, for example, or other low detail to traffic vehicles. Estimated bounce lighting for cars is a new thing in extra effects. It will make some vehicles look like they have neon around them. Particles effects, soft particles, needs to be turned on with flames to make your flames look nice and thick and not clear and transparently smoky looking. Now there are a few things that have been proven to be major FPS uh, increases for CSP so you can turn these things off if you want to notice an immediate gain in performance without going through an entire list of things. Those are extra effects, grass effects, rain effects, in lighting effects, this one here turn off, enable lighting and reflections off, dynamic shadows off, in reflections effects make sure your shot cube map isn't around the car, the shot local cube map. High quality mirrors also has an impact on performance. Weather effects and track effects seasonal adjustments, this is for white trees in the winter, uh, effect on the road and stuff like that. Also in game if you open up SOL plan selector there is a thing on there that you can check box for seasons it will say seasons if you have that checked in fall your trees will be orange in winter they'll be white this is also known to have an impact on performance and in particles effects personally i like to disable everything except for the new flames with some smoke anti-aliasing is a personal preference to make your game less choppy, pixelated, more smooth and sharp at the cost of graphical performance. Now what I mean by that is everybody has a different taste for how smooth or sharp the game is and those settings will change it. If you have a specific problem with your game not being smooth or sharp enough, mess around with MSAA, FXAA, and if you use extra effects, mess around with temporal anti-aliasing. You need to have a minimum extra sharpness of 10% with temporal anti-aliasing or else the game will show some waviness. The roads will have a little bit of waviness to them and the lights will not come through properly. Please use extra sharpness 10% if using temporal anti-aliasing. Now let's get into performance, that we've gone over the couple graphical things that people might have as a personal preference and some known bugs. Now we're going to go to performance. It is important to know if you are running a 2 gig video card or less, or have an integrated graphic system on your processor. This is usually processors that are, for example, Intel, it'll be a number followed by a U. With Ryzen, they have some U ones, they have a 5600G. These types of processors that have integrated graphics are going to have a very challenging time running this game. If you have an integrated graphics, please just wait until the next video or two when I come out with a better video to describe the integrated graphics. For everybody who has a lower budget system, now we can get into this. So when you get into the video settings, if you don't want to spend a bunch of time watching the video here, just go ahead and copy these settings. These settings here are very low spec with anti-aliasing off. If this looks too pixelated, start by turning some of the anti-aliasing on, which is MSAA, FXAA, and temporal anti-aliasing. Stick to this if you have performance, these two settings here. So now what we will do 
is we will go through some of the settings here. Personally, myself, I can say something like glare will have a bigger impact at nighttime when there's lots of lights around. So if you're playing in the daytime, you might want to have it on a little bit. If you're playing at nighttime and you get bad FPS drop or drops, come try and check out the glare setting here. For the most part here, these settings should pretty much work for everybody that has a dedicated graphics card. You don't want to go to static. It's not going to look good at all. You want to have at least one frame, at least about 900 meters in front of you to make it look okay. Everything here is perfectly fine for low spec. Another thing here is the LOD bias set to zero. I personally will only run this at zero because if you turn it up, which is actually going to the negative, the picture just gets a little too sharp and you lose too much performance for no reason. Also, if you have too much sky reflection coming on your vehicle, you can actually turn down some skybox reflection in this setting as well. So try these out. Links will be in the description. <clears throat> and we can move on to the custom shaders patch portion of this. So if you want to save performance here, one thing that should be noted is you can open up render stats csp in game i have another video for that and you can actually look at all of these settings and how much they are impacting your performance in live time in render stats csp in the game you can then come into these settings and disable settings that you know are causing you graphical performance so one thing i've gone ahead and done is I have tested these on multiple different systems with people and helped out a lot of people. So I know these settings do work well for most people. Not for everybody, for most people. So what I'm going to do here is go through what I have changed to make the difference on these systems. I'm going to go through general patch settings last because this is different for everybody. So let's go through the main settings first. Brake disc effects is the glow around the brakes when the brakes are hot. I turn this off because I'm never ever looking at that when I'm driving. Car instruments, you should have use high beam modes by default off and turning your lights on and off for signaling off automatically. Turn both of those off. I turn headlights will break and crashes off and some of these options off. That's simply just because I don't want them on and it's one less thing to communicate with the system. Colorful shadowing, I have this off. It's just an effect that I personally don't care about, which again is more impact on the system telling the systems to do stuff. I do not have DXGI enabled. I have not had a reason to enable this. My game has been running great without it. Extra effects is a really big setting here. Most people who want to have just performance gain will want to come in here and turn off extra effects because it literally allows for a whole nother rendering pass of the game to provide all these different effects and you're literally basically rendering the game twice with a whole bunch of effects and everything and it's huge on your graphical performance. Some people have reported a 100% FPS increase. That's double the normal FPS they get just from turning off this. And from my last video, people have reported getting up to three times more their frames per second from following these videos. So I highly recommend if you want good performance only and you don't care much about the visuals, turn extra effects off completely. If you do care a little bit about the visuals, you can turn on the extension for extra effects. I don't use motion blur. I will use temporal anti-aliasing to have a little more smoothness in my game. I use local reflections active on medium or low at a resolution of 80%. Again, these are reflections turn them up for photos, turn them up for your videos and your content creation. But while you're playing the game, if you're especially a first person driver, you don't need to render in high quality reflections at 100% resolution <clears throat> because you're not really going to be noticing it all that much while you're driving. 
I don't use ambient occlusion. I find this to be something that puts a little too much shadows into the game, a little too much darkness for my personal taste, and it does impact performance. I will use extra space screen lighting, but I will not turn all of these settings on at the end, especially the cars one here, because this one will actually add some neon effect on some vehicles onto the ground, and it doesn't look very good. It's a little bit of a graphical bug for the online modded content. So even if you do have extra effects on, I personally don't recommend going over this unless, you know, you just want that extra little bit of look at a little bit of a, a performance loss. This is plenty enough to have the game look good. Fake shadows effects, I keep this on, but I turn off the dynamic light stuff. I just keep on fake shadow effects. I notice there's lots of little graphical shadow bugs if you have this off. For example, if you are on SRP and you're going through the tunnel and underneath vehicles ahead of you, you can see flickering vehicle shadows. Come make sure fake shadow effects is on. It'll take away that bit of graphical bug that's going on there. Force feedback tweaks, I leave it alone. I leave this alone. I leave gamepad effects alone. Graphics adjustments, again, I recommend having some force low res stuff on for the um, low performance spec guys. I don't recommend touching the car LODs or track LODs because this will give you a weird graphical loss and it's going to suck. It's going to look really bad if you turn these down. Keep them the same or increase them if you don't care about performance at the cost of it looking so much better. Other than that, you can come into post-processing and I recommend at least using medium down here and just keep everything else the same. This will work fine. Grass effects is randomly procedurally generated grass. Basically, as you're going through the track, the grass in front of you is going to be randomly generated out of what is there. And what happens is you consistently get grass being generated in your game and it's going to cause you graphical performance. I really recommend turning this off, especially for online things. There's grass that you just don't, it doesn't matter. It looks cool and all, it looks better, but it doesn't really matter for gameplay. You're never on the grass or anything. For GUI, I'm not going to go through all this one, but in the GUI, I have uh, gone through and I've made the UI a little less graphically demanding. And uh, so just copy these settings and, and work from these. That's what I would recommend doing. You can stop the video here and uh, take down these settings if you like. Lighting effects is a big one. We have enable lighting and reflections. You want to have that off. You want to have enable trees lighting off. Cars casting lights you can turn down. You do not want to have dynamic shadows on. It looks great, but it is very expensive. Now, while we are in the lighting effects section, I will go over some things here that people have an issue with. So if you have not enough or too much bounced light from the track or vehicles inside of your car while you're in first person and it's blinding, turn down headlights on interior turn down bounced interior light. If your interior is not lit enough, you turn these up. It's that simple. Cars lit multiplier is for the headlights and taillights of the vehicle. If you notice they are not bright enough, specifically those, and it's not bright enough on the track, and it's specifically your headlights and taillights, you can turn specifically this up or down. Flames not being big enough is flame specular. I run it 150% because it makes my flames huge and I think it looks good. Headlights wideness, I run 120% or more. And the dynamic ambient brightness, I like to increase, which will make the brightness around headlights a little brighter. Neck effects, I just run almost default neck effects. Particles effects for performance here, what you can do in my personal preference, what I find the best is to keep new flames active. I like debug mode. Keep new smoke and dust, but limit your particles way down. And make sure you have soft particles on, which will make the flames and everything look good. 
and you can also take off the shadows and everything here the smoke from overheated brakes show wood mirrors all of this stuff can become off to increase performance but also keep these effects going Rain effects is a really graphically demanding setting. I recommend having this off at all times, except when you really have the craving to put rain on your system. Reflections effects, let's just make sure you have this unchecked. Don't use this. Shot cube map around focused cars and camera, do not use that. Shadowed wheels, everybody should have it off. It's a graphical bug online for most people and it makes their screen flicker. It does not look good. Skid marks effects I have off completely to save rendering. Smart mirror, I personally would like to keep this on for myself. However, for most people, if you care about performance, I recommend just hitting off. Turn those off. Those are things you do not need on. They will cause graphical performance. Smart shadows, again, you can turn this off, but it's not going to look good. I recommend just having this on. Track adjustments, uh, hide the dynamic flags, don't allow seasonal adjustments. Add larger glow for distant emissive in fog is known to cause some graphical errors with some people's systems, especially with my custom lights config that I put out there. This will make signs and lights kind of circular and look really ugly and some things be black if that happens to you just come and turn this off and i like to hide all spectators and everything else there tires effects visually deforming and damageable tires i am going to take this off weather effects here everybody i have the compatible sky shader on with everything extra off for you guys this is running SOL, so everybody can use these settings and not have to worry about it. Windscreen effects, you can turn that on and remove dirt completely, or you can keep this off. That's a personal preference completely. Personally, myself, just keep it off for better performance. Now, at the end of the day, if you watched the video, you watched through all this stuff, thank you so much. I really appreciate that, and I hope you learned a lot from the video. The next video that we are going to be covering is going to be covering SOL post-processing filters and SOL filter in-game. How to make your game look good. Now that you've done these settings, now that you have better performance, how can we make this game look good to you how you want it to look? That's one thing that we are going to have to go over in the next video tomorrow. So if you find that these settings did help you and you do have a performance gain and you are happy with what's going on now, except for how your game looks, don't worry about it. We can fix that tomorrow. I will be posting a video tomorrow. Maybe I'll post a video later on today. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. It's not about what you got. It's about how you set it up. Stay gaming, everybody. Have a great day.